Lord doing me now. I'm still the talk of the town. Running the scissors, stop hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frown. Can't hop out, then we clear on the cross. Money shit, my lifestyle is all I know. Don't take it as I brag about. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? It's your girl Lauren K. We are talking to town, and who's in the town today? Jay Julio. Okay, so we got Jay Julio in the building. Just to get us a little familiar, we're gonna start off with a game of rapid fire questions. Okay, mm. so I'm gonna say the question, you just answer as fast as you can. What's the nastiest food you've ever eaten? Um, goddamn grits. <laughs> you from the south? You don't like grits? I'm from Detroit. I f okay, anybody with an accent to me, I just be calling them the South. Everybody That's my problem. Because y'all not used to it. But you definitely an have an accent. Like a hard New York accent. Yeah. What does it sound like to you? I don't, what's that one? Uh, Do a New York impression right now, quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that one video that went viral? I'm in your front yard, whatever the fuck you said. Well, you sound like you saying it. You don't sound like New York. I want I, I want to feel New York. No, I ain't going to embarrass myself. Try. <laughs> Just say I'm going to the store. Like a New Yorker. I'm going to the store. I don't know how. It's hard. Challenge yourself. <laughs> okay, where are you from? Detroit. What's your sign? Capricorn. What's the last text you sent? You going to keep putting me under pressure. Um, <laughs> Silence gives I spicy. Somebody give me ten minutes. Okay, okay. Who would you be stranded on a deserted island with? Rihanna. Who would you not let your, let date your daughter? Chris Brown. Are you single? It's complicated. What's your favorite song of all time? Make me an issue. What's the worst song you've ever heard? It's a nigga that y'all wouldn't know. Okay. But just to just to give you a fair answer, um, the worst song I've ever heard. Um, you remember that nigga Ice JJ Fish? Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Don't do Ice JJ Fish. He tried. He really tried. Okay. And what's your favorite saying? My favorite saying? Mm hmm Like your favorite thing to say. Uh, this shit getting out of hand. <laughs> this shit getting out of hand. Okay, that's funny. So how did you start music? Where did it start? Uh, I've been writing music since I was eight years old. Oh, wow. But I had started taking it serious at like 16. Okay. Around that time, and, um, yeah, just going through like a lot of real life shit, and then being like studios being accessible for me. Mm -hmm. Around that time, I just started recording. Okay, so what did you listen to growing up? Who influenced your sound now? A lot of Kevin Gates. Okay. Future, me. So you was always heavy on rap. Yeah, don't like my favorite three. Okay, so what type of music did your parents have you listening to? Like when you waking up and you cleaning up, what's on? Um. See, I don't know, because I was never in the house for real. Mm, you was outside yeah, from young. Like, I, was, I was one of them little baby kids in the front yard playing <laughs> on, like, a trampoline or some shit, like the little beds in the front. Okay. I've actually never seen a trampoline in real life. Like, not in nobody's house, only, like, Scott's home. Oh, yeah, see, you, you from New York. Yeah, because y'all got land out there. Y'all yeah. got space. All y'all buildings, like, so. Everybody right on top of each other. Like, Why? I don't know. I just can't be that close to somebody. I mean, you in your house. Yeah, it was like when you walk outside, when you walk out your door, you then they can see people, 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 yeah, people, like, people, every time. I'm okay. So, how would you describe Detroit's sound? Um, unique. Shit. It's trap. It's like okay. real, like dark. Okay. Do you um, feel like there's a difference between like Atlanta trap and Detroit trap? Yeah, hundred percent. So, what it's does that difference sound like? Like then they're like the same. Mm -hmm. Type shit, you know? Because a lot okay. of Atlanta artists fucking with Detroit artists. Okay. And a lot of people using Detroit type beats. Mm -hmm. But niggas got different sounds on them, though. Like, I like that. Okay. So when you listen to music, can you tell, like, oh, he's from Detroit, he's from Atlanta, he's from Chicago? Damn near, yeah. Wow. Like everybody got different lingo. Then, That's true. Like, I, I know accents because I be around a lot of people. Like okay. Travel, so I pick up on shit like that, but. That is one thing. I'm not that skilled with the accents. A I feel like a lot of y'all sound the same. A lot of motherfuckers be, you know, claiming to be from somewhere, but they really don't. And you can tell from how they talk. I could just tell from how a nigga move. Mm. Or at least if, like you say, you're from my city. I could tell if that's Kevin. So how does a Detroit person move? What's y'all essence like? I mean, I can't really 
explain that like where it's like like we cool we calm we we ain't okay. doing too much you feel me like we stand on we stand on business if a nigga from the city then he know how to move anyway like okay we ain't if a nigga in the field for real like if you been around you know what i'm saying if you mm-hmm. grew up around the right motherfuckers or whatever like you kind of already prepared for what come your way like a nigga ain't just getting into no bullshit for nothing okay so I find it interesting that you said that you've always been listening to rap for the most part because I feel like a lot of your songs have like classic samples. Like you got the Bonnie and Clyde sample and then you got the Somebody I Used to Know sample that's real poppy. So how do you determine like what songs you want to sample in your songs? Um, I never really thought about it like that. I just like, if a nigga send me a beat, mm-hmm. I go through the pack. Okay. If I like it, I like it. Um, me, honestly, I don't like doing samples. Oh, really? In order to make some real money off of it, you damn got to get it clear. And if you ain't really got access to do that kind of shit or the money, it's no point. Yeah, so. that's true. So how do you pick which beat you like? Like, how do you know, like, okay, this is the beat. This one is the one I'm about to go crazy on. It just got to have a vibe to it. It got to have a bounce. Okay. Like, every time. So I don't write no more. I ain't wrote music in, like, five years. Really? So, like, when damn, I go in there, like, I'll be freestyling on it or whatever I do to see if I catch a vibe. But mm-hmm. it got to, like... I don't know. I always picture myself how I do the music video okay. while I'm recording it. So if like if I mm. if I got a vision for the song, then I'll make it. But if it, if it don't give me that feeling, then I'll just go to the next one. Mm. So you find it more like what's the difference between writing and going in the booth and freestyling it? Like what do you feel like freestyling does for you? I feel like it's more original when you freestyle. Okay. Um Well, for different people, because some niggas just go in there and say anything that go after the last ball because it just makes sense to them. But mm-hmm. to me it's like it's more original because I could rap like I know myself like the back of my hand. I know my, I know my life, and if I'm rapping a song about my life, mm-hmm. it's like if I could find a way to put it together. But it's real, like it's real to me, so it's not gonna be too hard. Sometimes when you write, you tend to say too much or mm-hmm. think too deep in it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So, what is your recording process like outside of the writing? Do you have to have like a certain ambiance? You like lights. We when drink, I'm recording like, in the studio, I, def- I need drink. I need, well, I don't smoke weed. Like, I keep my vape with me. Okay. Um, goddamn. I like for it to be like a blue light set. Okay. That's real specific. Yeah, like, blue light set. Okay. Um, so, I know you have songs like Lifestyle where, like, you know, you do the more melodic. And then you have songs like Do The Most where, like you mentioned before, you would like your rapping. Mm-hmm. So, which do you prefer to make? More melodic I songs really prefer, or yeah, really the melodic like rap songs? Because really? the rap songs, like that's just shit I do. Like I, I love rapping. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but it's like the singing shit be kind of challenging to me, and I, I like shit like that. Okay. And then I'm I always been more of like a melodic. Like when I listen to other rappers, like I listen to the melodic shit over the rap shit. Okay. Because I don't be in the mood to hear that gangster tough shit all the time. Like it'd be cool, but. People so. always say that. They say that about drill. Like, they think it's crazy if you wake up at, like, 8 in the morning yeah, listening like, to drill. Yeah, like, who the fuck about to go to ride to work listening to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's That's cool, the drill though. princess like, right there. I'm certain she does. Look, she drove here listening to that shit. You know she did. <laughs> 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 no, it's cool because it gets it get you turned. Like, you go yeah. to the club, it's like, uh, but. So, what do you prefer to hear in the club? Just so y'all know, we had a conversation off camera. He's not a dancer. He doesn't dance in the club. So what do you want to hear when you go in the club? I ain't gonna lie. In the club type vibe, I need to hear like, like some Boston Richie. Some what? Like Boston Richie. You don't know who Boston, Boston Richie? Richie? Is? No, I'm not familiar. Yeah, that's. He Damn, has, I'm late. You gotta go check him out. Um, where he from? Uh, uh, I think he from Florida. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been fucking with his music. For so what his music like? Like what? Why is that what you want to hear in the club? He just give me a turn. He be talking cash shit. He, 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 he be popping his shit. I used to be popping in the club. But see, you don't dance. No. So it's confusing to me when you use the word turn. But you know, a nigga got you, you, you get your vibe. You feel me? Like, you you get your cup, whatever. I just imagine you, like, nodding your head real hard. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it ain't that. I'm low-key. You probably wouldn't even see me in the club because, like, I'm not the nigga that's just in the front trying to be seen. Like, I'm in the back doing what I do. Real low key. Yeah, like. Talk, you did say you're you know, a Capricorn. That's a Capricorn yeah. trait, very. You think so? I think so. I know some Capricorns lit. Like, never chilling. 
I think that a lot of the time with Capricorns, you have to get them in their zone. Like, you have to get them comfortable. You have to get them, like, to, like, hatch from their cocoon before they show you. That might be true. Yeah. So, have you gotten any celebrity cosigns yet? Yeah, I got a few. Um, Want to hear them? Well, one, of course, would be, like, a close relationship I already had before music, which was Sada. Um, okay. Oh, that was before the music? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, lit. Way before the music. Um, Love that. I had niggas like Sauce Walker. Um, that's lit. Um, niggas like Trap Trap Manny from out here. Like, that's my okay. that's my guy. Uh, I had met him when I first came to New York, and he's just been super cool with me ever since I came out. Okay, so I actually didn't know that you and Sada were cool beforehand. Mm-hmm. So what was that like being on tour with him? Being on tour with like somebody so familiar. I mean, it really wasn't like a tour. Okay. It was like it was a multiple city, like where you know you just booked up at times, but it wasn't like labeled a tour. But okay, um, being a part of that was cool. It was a, it was a learning experience for me. It was a, you know. What did you learn? Just like how this shit work, like how how you need to operate when you know what I'm saying. Like when mm-hmm. it's it's business, it's not a time for fun. Like most people probably like, oh, I'm going on tour, it's fun, but that shit really hard work. Really just work, you know what I'm saying and. For me seeing it at the time, like, of course my dream to want to be an artist and right. get to that point one day, it just put me in a mind where, you know, I know when I get there. So what's one thing that you feel like this tour helped you with, whether that be actual performing, recording, like, mindset? What's one thing that you feel like this tour really changed for you? Um, It really changed my way of, like, performing. Like, you got to understand the crowd you're in front of. Mm. You got to understand how to, like... Read the room. Read the room type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, Sada always came with the energy. So if the, even if the room did, it's like the moment he get on the microphone, he gonna yell for like five minutes, and this, <laughs> you know. So, this so shit like that. oh sorry, guys. No, you good. So what does your perfect tour look like? You and let's say you get, let's say three other artists. You get to pick three artists, any caliber, any city. What does that tour look like? And if you real quick, what is the tour named as well? Well, the three artists I would go on tour would be Drake, Future, Lil Baby. And who? Lil Baby. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's going up. It's out here. It's sold out. Shit me. Out there, right? <laughs> um, and the tour name, shit. I don't know. Think of something real quick. Come on, you go with words. You're an artist. We outside. Oof, I like that. We outside. We okay. outside, too. Okay. <laughs> so are these people that you would want to collab with in the future? Yeah, for sure. Any other, like, dream collabs? Um, I always thought about doing, like, a, like a record. What did it sound like if I do this shit with, like, Chris Brown? Or, like, like any singing nigga, like, who really mm-hmm. talented with just songs. Not just good at singing, because some niggas can't make songs for real. That's okay. But, like, working with people on that kind of level. Niggas like Uzi. Okay. Yeah, Uzi, another one of my favorites. I forgot to mention him. Uzi. I think you and Uzi would sound really, really interesting on the track, because yeah. the energy. Like, I... But like that's just like a whole lot of energy on a track. <laughs> so yeah, let's we'll see, let's make that happen. So we're gonna play a game, another game. Okay. We like games here. So we know you love to talk about when niggas is capping. So this is <laughs> cap or no cap. Okay? okay. So I'm gonna say a statement and you let me know if that's cap or no tap no cap and quickly why. Okay? okay. First one. Detroit is an abandoned city. Cap. Why is that cap? I got a bunch of homeless building shit all around the city. Okay. Period. Love that. Number two, Nicki Minaj is the greatest female rapper of all time. Cap or no cap? No cap. That's right. <laughs> New York has the best pizza. Cap. Ooh. Detroit who got the best pizza? has the best pizza. All you got to do is go to any liquor store. They sell them bitches for a dollar. Liquor store? Yes. Y'all selling pizzas out of liquor stores? Yes, man. And them bitches is busting. So we have pizzerias, but you want me to go to Detroit and go yes. in a liquor store and buy I one. guarantee you, if you go and eat a motherfucker, slice a pizza out of the liquor store in Detroit. What's different about the the slice? Because I know like Chicago got them the deep dish. Be, them be, you ever had like, I don't even know what the fuck the kind of bread called. Them bitches be thick, but it's good, it's green. It's like Sicilian? No, oh, I don't know. I can't tell you. But you just got to go taste it. I'll That's take you to take one of them slices. I, you know, I'm willing, but pizza out of a liquor store just doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> So the next one, the man should pay all the bills. No cap. Okay. Well, you said you don't like grits, because my next question was sugar and grits. So let's change it. Sugar and spaghetti. 
is good. So that's no cap. No cap. Okay. So you put sugar in your spaghetti. Yes. So you could taste it or just like subtly? No, I pour that shit all over my shit. Like <laughs> I, my shit be sweet. It be soggy, juicy, all kind of shit. I just had sweet spaghetti for the first time um last year. And it wasn't bad. Spaghetti to me is the worst form of pasta, but that's another. No, so hell no, spaghetti good. What's your favorite form of pasta, real quick? Spaghetti. Oh, that's tea. <laughs> all right. G Herbo wraps off beat. Cap or no cap? No cap. Do you feel like that's a recent thing? Like he just stopped? He just started rapping on beat, or you always felt like he was on beat? I ain't gonna lie. I done tried doing songs like G Herbo because I thought he rapped off beat. But okay. it'd be sweet. Like it'd be hard as hell. So it's like the fact that he could do that and then yeah. at some point in the song get right back on beat. Mm-hmm. It'd be hard. I've definitely heard uh, rappers say that. Rappers have been like, you know, like that. It takes skill to rap in that cadence mm. with beats. That's like, like a that, nigga so. who rap fast as hell. You're okay. not on beat half the time, but you make it fit. Like you mm-hmm. make it do what it do. So that's interesting. Okay, New York has the best drill scene. Cap or no cap? You can already just stop pizza. Tread lightly. No, nah, there's no cap right now. Okay. Um, it's a most of the drill that you hear is coming out of New York. Like mm-hmm. it's obviously that the New York scene in New York winning right now. So how do you feel about Chicago drill right now? Um, I mean, it's hard, but you don't got as many niggas as New York do coming with drill. You know what I'm saying? At least yeah. quality drill music. Like yeah. a lot of niggas in New York should be sounding good. That's a fact. It is a whole lot of them. So the last one, the baby and Megan really smashed. Cap or no cap? That's no cap. In you don't think opinion, that's cap? I, I, for, I for sure think my boy the baby went crazy. On Megan. <laughs> Why you don't think that's cap? I mean, because you look at look at the niggas she done went for before. We know. Two niggas she fucked before. Man, she know. We know Moneybag and we know um, who she with? Party. And Tori. We don't know that. That is speculation. I ain't anybody to get And so that. she put one short nigga on the roster and now she done fucked all of them? Man, listen. The baby is a street nigga. Okay. He, you could tell he got a little swag to him, whatever. Okay. Megan going. Man, I guess. So did you see his <laughs> recent interview with Hot 97? Nah. So on a recent interview, basically, he was defending himself because, you know, a lot of people felt like it was corny for him to bring up Megan in the Boogeyman song. And he was basically standing on it like, I said what I said. I told y'all, leave me out of it. Y'all didn't leave me out of it. So yeah. now the song is here. So you as an artist, where do you draw the line between like, okay, this is too personal to put into my craft or I'm going to put this in my craft? I mean, it's it's like, if it ain't nothing incriminating. Mm-hmm. And the world damn near already, like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, even if we know. Mm-hmm. Like, if I decide to put my business out there, then that's it. But I, I probably wouldn't say her name. I probably, mm-hmm. like, I'm not about to throw nobody else under the bus. Right. But if it's just something that, like, I'm responsible for and it wouldn't affect nobody else, mm-hmm. I'll speak on whatever the fuck I want to speak on. So you're not, like, a name dropper? No. Nah. But you'll talk, like, truth? Yeah. So how much of your raps are truths? Because, you know, some people, they just say, like, what well, sounds good and some people like no, like this is my life, this is my shit. And you said you put you into your shit, like this is your life. Yeah. It's easy. Um, like so, my raps like it just be like shit that I done seen. Okay. Shit that I like. I know other people who live a certain way. Like I rap about somebody else's situation. Mm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, all my raps true though. It's not like I don't like. I'm not one of them niggas that's growing and making up some shit. Like if I you hear me rap about a culinary, it's right. cause. I might not have one, but I have access to going and hopping my man's culling in every day if I want to. Or if I rap about a fucking big ass house, mm-hmm. if I don't got it, my man's got a big ass house and that's where I'm at. So it's like, right. just shit like that. It's never like reaching for nothing too far. Do you ever rap about situations that your friends have been through? Yeah. So how do you put yourself in the mindset of. Because, okay, the way I think about it is, like, actors, right? When they're portraying a certain role, they really got to get into that mindset, and that's how they give off their best performance. So how do you do that as a rapper? That's like somebody telling you what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And then they ask you, how would you react? Okay. So it's like, you got to put yourself in, you know what I'm saying, in that predicament and think, like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you feel. Or sometimes you might got a friend who is expressing to you. Mm-hmm. And you can see like they breaking down, or you know what I'm saying, like how it make them feel. Yeah. So it's like if you just you sit down and put that shit in words and you you play with it, it'll come out. Like I think that's a skill that's super interesting. I've always wanted to ask someone that. So I know you have a daughter, right? Two. 
Two. Okay. So how does J. Julio the rapper differ from J. Julio the father? I'm not Julio when I'm a father. Okay. I'm always a father, but right. like when I'm with my kids, like Julio out of the picture, like all that. Don't nothing else matter. Are you like a strict dad? You like, they get whatever they my want because I know how girl dads get. Mm-hmm. They be walking on me. They get whatever they want. They know they <laughs> Like, I want to get my daughters in them. Um, they had said they wanted a dog for so long. But I'm like, I don't. Y'all young still. I ain't about to get a dog. Y'all kill this motherfucker or some shit. <laughs> like, anything happen. Because my youngest, she like, a, like she she bad as fuck. She be hanging in our refrigerators. And oh, she active. Kind of shit. She active. Love that for her. Um, but, yeah, they said they wanted a dog. I was like, fuck it. And the dog that wanted it happened to be a three thousand dollar dog, so I was like, "All right." You got it. What type of dog yeah. was it? It's a bully. Okay. Yeah. I hope they take care of it. Don't go killing the dogs, y'all. I ain't give. It, I ain't give it. So like, it's not living with them yet. It's still at my. Okay. House. Okay. They wanted it, so it's like, all right, y'all got it. But they I'm know not they got to, it, right? Y'all not about to fuck up no three thousand dollar dog. Respectfully, <laughs> that's an investment. So For do sure. they be on TikTok? Um, no, they ain't get to that age, and hopefully they, when they do, they not. Too involved on shit like that. I don't want the internet to get a hold of my kids. Like I know how that shit. Yeah. Be. So you wouldn't let them like bust a little. Move on I mean, they be doing little like they be doing shit with their mama or whatever. Like I'm, I never stopped that. Right. But if it was up to me, I wouldn't want my kids to be too involved in the internet. So do you to, be I on still, TikTok? I still oh, tell my kids to make sure they read. You know, Love like, that. Go to like that's the shit I focus on. First, the phone and shit. Only thing they need to know is how to call me and their mom. <laughs> no period I think it's actually like beastie that like like when I was younger I got my first phone at 10 and I feel like it was just to say that I had a phone like it wasn't even it was prepaid yeah. like it was easy but I feel like now kids at like 7, 8 genuinely might need phones no, and that's so. like crazy see my kids they ain't got phones but my daughter's only 4 and 5 yeah. about to be 5 and 6 Um, they got iPads all the kids love the iPads yeah so it's like they got their games. They watch their little show. Like, my oldest, she know how to go on YouTube. She be calling me like, Dad, I'm listening to your song. They be smart as hell. Yeah, like, my daughter, she, my daughter's very smart. But, like I said, if keep it to a minimum. I don't like too much of the internet shit. Mm -hmm. So, do you be on TikTok? No, nah, I just, they literally just made me start a TikTok. Like, oh, they made you TikTok? do it? I'm like, all right. Probably ain't going to be on that bitch, but I make it. I was about to ask, so, what type of content you think you about to be putting out? Because, like I said, we already established another dancer. Shit, more like lifestyle for real, for real. Okay, so I'm just showing no if people like live. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting on, on nothing dancing. It's over. <laughs> so you're just going to do like more like vloggy stuff, talking, show the people like, oh, this is my lifestyle type yeah, of thing. like promote, you know, music or anything that I have to promote, that kind of shit. But I'm not getting on that shit dancing. So that's what I was going to ask you. Do you feel like, well, how do you feel about TikTok being so vital in um, upcoming artists' careers in 2022? I mean... I like anything that's beneficial okay. to artists because you already got to come out of a lot. Like it's like when you're doing business and all that shit, it's mm -hmm. a lot of shit you got to, you know, it's a lot of lot of people's hands who be in on a lot of shit. So any yeah. extra stream of income is kind of always cool. Absolutely. Um, and especially because it's not like they really got to do much. If you got a song that's popping, it kind of just works for itself. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Okay. So you have a song, Hold On. I think that of all the songs of yours that I listen to, Hold On Give Me, TikTok, and not even at first listen. What made me say it was, I feel like y'all doing dancing in the, the, the video. Y'all got y'all little... Call it dancing? Um, I would call it a, a groove, perhaps. Yeah. That's how, that's, it's a promise. A jig, that's maybe? How I was in the club. Like, that's okay. how I look like, I'm vibing. I'm, okay. You know what I'm saying? I, but... Okay, I think that y'all meaning you and all your friends I was in the video, I definitely think that y'all should get together and do those dance moves for Hold On on TikTok. I think that TikTok would love to. Like, I feel <laughs> like that's what I was doing. I don't know. I think about that. Okay, so in your videos also, aside from you dancing, you have a lot of cars. So is that on purpose? Like, are you into cars or is that for aesthetics? I'm actually very into cars. Okay. I fucking love cars. So how many do you have right now? I only got three cars right now. Only got three cars. He said only got three cars, y'all. So yeah, which cars like we have? No, I don't, don't want to make it seem <laughs> like that. But no, yeah. I mean, I got three cars, but I, it was at a point in my time in life where I had more. Okay. Um, I just stopped doing, like, meaningless shit. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Ain't no reason for me to be. You know what I'm saying? Like the more I get older and the more responsible I like I'm learning to be. Mm-hmm. It's like ain't no point for all that extra shit. So what cars do you have? Um, I got my S550 Benz. I got a C8 Corvette. Then I got my Red Eye Challenger. Okay, so you're more of a, like a, a car guy or a truck guy. That was my I'm measurement to the truck. car and the truck. My big homie got a cousin. Okay. He got the uh, shit hard on the motherfucker. That's been making me get in the truck for real, for real. Like the more I, I get in the car with him, we'll ride mm-hmm. around. He'll come pick me up, take me to the studio. Have you rode around New York yet? In New York? Yeah, like, when I first came to New York, my first time, I had drove my uh, my Hellcat down here. How was that? Did you like it? Because I Not hate really, driving because here. Because I was about to run out of gas like four, five times. What you was doing? Because every time I get on E, the gas station would be far as fuck, or it's too much traffic. <laughs> no, definitely traffic. That's why I asked that, because I feel like all the cars you were saying are, like, speed, like, yeah. and you can't do none of that here, because between the cameras oh, no, and the people, <sighs> really? On the I, highway? Everywhere. In the street? Whenever it wasn't too much traffic. If it was, if it was cool enough for me to wiggle through, I was... This bitch. I don't feel like it's uh, at night. Night, morning, whenever. If it's space for me to get through, I'm getting through. Zipping through in the middle of the day in New York is mad crazy. No, nah, so my homeboy had drove my car. One of the uh we had woke up one morning. Mm-hmm. We getting ready to go and meet somebody. I'm like, shit, you drive. Cause I was up all night. Okay. And I, I'm tired. He like uh, like bet. Plus he he from Jersey, so mm-hmm. like he grew up out here and shit. He already know the streets. Yeah. He trying to do what I do. He trying to Zipping. give it that old boom, mm-hmm. this nigga hit somebody on the bike. Oh, damn. There's this white guy. I'm like, man, <laughs> like, give me the fuck up out of here. Like, we got to we gotta go. I ain't want to get into, like, no trouble or nothing. A car like, He ain't hit better. him too hard, but he hit him off the bike. <laughs> he nudged him. Sense. Yeah, like, he nudged him, but. Damn. Luckily, the guy wasn't on him, like, oh, like, you hit me, call the police type shit. I hope not. No, nah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm real happy he was calm about that. If yeah. I get hit off my bike, it's up. I'm suing well, we everybody involved. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like we did it on purpose. Like we I mean, that don't really matter. I still got hit off my bike. So I noticed in your song, Do the Most, it is four minutes and 22 seconds. Mm-hmm. I wrote that down because I feel like a lot of songs now are under three minutes. So do you feel like making shorter songs aids a person's career? Like, is that something that you keep in mind when you make your songs or you don't care, you going? Um, With that song, kind of like, I preferably make a song like two minutes, 30 seconds. Okay. Because a lot of people with attention span not short. Like, it ain't like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you got to have either interesting ass video or yeah. you got to have a fan base that's like. Or that B got to go They're going to watch the whole shit. Because a lot of these motherfuckers will cut your video on. They damn near ready to click their Instagram notification when it pop up. Cause that's business. a fact. So, like, it just depends. But with that song, I didn't even notice it was that long. Sometimes, uh-huh. like like I said, I just be going in there rapping. So if the beat keep going, I just be going like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. So but. how does audience, well, your audience, as time goes on, the attention span gets shorter and shorter. So how do you, as an artist, deal with that? Like, how do you rectify that? Um, You just got to make sure it's interesting enough to, like, they, you got to have something that to keep them on their edge. Okay. So it's like they don't want to click off of it because they wait. They waiting on something like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It's, you don't want to make them feel like your shit is boring. Yeah. Like a minute in or forty seconds in, they like oh, shit ain't hitting on that. So do you think the visual is more important or the audio is more important? The visual is just as important as the the audio. Okay, so they equal. Yeah. Okay. A video can make a record though. That's a fact. So it it just depends. Like I say, some people got fan bases where that kind of shit take place often. Cause mm-hmm. a lot of these niggas' music be bullshit, with the video be fire. Yeah, make the song sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you got a hit record. Like niggas blow up all the time with two hundred dollar video. So with your videos, do you are you the brains behind your videos, or do you have like? Uh, directors come to you like, hey, this is the vision that I see. No, I ain't never had like no big budget video shoot for like directors and shit. Like I got video videographers who I call, they want a thousand dollars to pull up. It's just running good. Like a lot of times when I shoot my videos, they really just be like the shit we doing that day. Okay. Like. So lifestyle. Yeah, like the whole on video that mm-hmm. literally was just nothing but us moving around in Miami during Rolling Loud. Mm-hmm. Um, fucking. The do the most video that literally like I had went to the city for two days, 
Um, oh, like a, a lot of my niggas had like just came home from jail, mm-hmm. shit like that. So we was just cool and like everybody pulled up like. So it just be like, this is my life. I just want y'all to see it for these three yeah, minutes. Like, okay, I love that. See, I'm just not learning to like put a lot of shit in folks' face. Like if I'm going to talk about it, put it out there because I never was like that kind of. Like, I'm not a bragging, mm-hmm. show off type of nigga. So it's like I never was really into like it's a few videos I done up like money into this shit, but I was never really big on that. But it's like now I'm learning it because it people wanna see it. So I'm getting to that point to okay. start doing more in my videos. Part of growing as an artist. Yeah. Right. So pivoting to the business side of music. I listened to you on the podcast and you said that this was back in August. You said that you had never made a dime off of music. Has that changed? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I, just, I just signed my deal, so. Oh, well, lo- that was my next question. Yeah. Love that. Do you want to talk about it? you want to disclose that or it's on a hush-hush for right now? Um, yeah, it's the Phantom Music Group. Okay, congratulations on that. Well, we love that. I'm clapping for everybody in the room, period. We love that. <laughs> so how has making music changed your business since? Um, because, of course, before I got into doing anything like that, like, it just took a lot of studying, mm-hmm. a lot of research, um, you know, certain conversations with people I know not going to leave me wrong, like my lawyers and, you know, big homies or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I got a lot of people who are already in the industry. Like, I got a lot of relationships with other folks at labels and shit. Okay. So, a lot of people who I grew close, close with over the years, they, like, made sure that I was taken care of when it came down to business. Do you look more to the, like, executive side when it comes to business advice, or do you look more at, like, the actual rappers who are doing the business? You know what I'm saying? Well, the executive, because at the end of the day, the executives really be the ones making a lot of shit happen. I've artists. just heard rappers feel like they don't trust the executive side. I mean, I feel like as long as you're doing your job, that mm-hmm. shit really don't matter. Right. Like, you look at young boy, that nigga... Wasn't in the best sure. of deals, but he doing he more he said, making, he's making way mm-hmm. more shit happen than a lot of these other artists, and he doing that from home. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, it really don't matter. It just depend on the kind of artist you is. Like you can either make an excuse on why your shit not moving, or you could just keep doing something until it move. Right. Um, but it's kind of important on both sides. I'm not saying that the rapper side is not important because mm-hmm. you you got to be about business. Yeah. Because these executives' lives probably nine times out of ten gonna be they. The same way, rather if they working with you or not. Right. They That's life a fact. Change. That's a fact. So, I always say that though, like life is what you make it, and so that goes like in the situation. So, is there anything else outside of rap that you want to get into? Like, do you want to venture into acting? Um, do you want to build businesses? I like, want a model. Really. And I want to okay. be an actor. Okay. Do you act? Like, have you tried it before, or is just something you want to like learn I, about I and know get I into? Can act. You know you can act. I'm probably the best actor. Okay, so earlier I asked you to act like a New Yorker, and you told me no. No, see, it ain't that. It ain't that. It ain't that time. Right now. It ain't that situation. Okay, you need like a script and stuff, and really get into yeah. character. Okay, so what type of movies would you see yourself doing? Like comedy. Okay. What's your favorite comedian? My life be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like the shit that I be going through on the daily, it be fucking hilarious. Who's your favorite comedian? Uh, Chris Tucker. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I feel like I don't get that often. Like, we usually hear, like, the Dave Chappelle's. Kevin definitely Hart's. my favorite. I don't really see nobody being better than Chris Tucker. I'm not saying, like, discrediting anybody else. Mm-hmm. But Chris Tucker, at least my favorite. I grew up watching Chris Tucker. Okay. Um, Kevin Hart, fucking hilarious, too. He's hilarious. Who's your favorite rapper turned actor? 50 Cent. That's a good one. Yeah, especially with you whole being in the the business mind frame and shit. Yeah. One thing about Fifty, he's gonna get to that business every I like time. Yeah, with the BMF series. Yeah, you know that's based out of my hometown. Okay. So it's like for me knowing the story, I feel like I didn't know BMF was in Detroit actually. Yeah, big niche and all them from Detroit. Hmm. But I feel like my favorite part about that whole situation was that he took his son and, and, and like turned his son up a legal way. And, yeah. And and. It's like his son can't, like, nobody can do his dad's life more than his son. That's a fact. He definitely gave him a platform. Yeah. Love that for him. So are you doing anything soon? You putting out anything soon? What can the people look forward to? Um, Within the next few months, we're going to, like, we putting a lot of 
a lot of work in a studio and all that shit. Really just pushing out singles and getting like more content done. Okay. And they get to look out for your TikTok. For a project, but okay. at the moment, we not focus on the project. Okay. So EPs or like no project at all? No project at all. We, I mean, I don't know because my team really support anything I do. So if I wake up tomorrow like I'm a Love that. project, they going to be like, all right, let's go. Love that. So yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I saw it like just interrupting your your answer. That was crazy. So um, tell the people where to find you. Um, all my social media, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, everything is under J Julio. J A Y J U L L I O. Two L's. That's important. Two L's. Because actually, when I Google Julio with a regular L, uh, um, Let PNS came up. Book, yeah. So. Facts. Two L's. J. Julio, I'm Lauren K. Let's talk to the town. We out.